The River Kennet in the Thames Valley is a beautiful place to fish, whatever the time of year, especially when you're allowed somewhere slightly off the beaten path. And that's when it helps to have friends in low places, sorry Martin, high places, such as mad keen fisherman and recently retired Member of Parliament for Reading West, Martin Salter. I mean, this is most fantastic. I mean, this is, this is the Upper Kennet uh, uh, near Kimbury. Uh, it's where Passion for Angling was uh, filmed, probably the greatest uh, angling movie uh, that was ever produced, or, or series, angling TV series. Uh, people like Chris Yates and, and, and Bob James and Hugh Miles, people who've been around the angling scene for a long, long time, shot an iconic piece of film here. And, you know, for me to be allowed to fish here just occasionally, it's a real privilege. And uh, yes, I mean, there are still some parts of Kennet which are, are wonderful, despite all the problems that the river has. And there are some good fish to be caught here, as you can see. Joining Martin today is head of the Angling Trust, Mark Lloyd, and another Mark who has an impressive selection of exotic flies hanging off his hat. I thought dangly bits on hats were supposed to keep the flies away. Look at that beautiful fin there, beautiful dorsal fin here. It goes up, that's what gives them such power in the water when you're playing them in. Lovely, lovely fish. They only tolerate absolutely clean water. Today, thereafter, chub, grayling, perch and dace. There are trout, which don't seem to realise that the trout season hasn't started yet. There's even a wild one in the mix. OK, now this is actually a wild trout. Uh, much nicer markings than the stockfish. Uh, more spots along that line there, and you can see the fin. It's not, not a trout that's been brought up in a stew, in a stew pond. It's a really natural. You see all the, all the rays in the fin there. No damage on it at all. Beautiful, beautiful little wild fish. I'd much rather catch one of these than one ten times its size. Martin may be retired from Parliament, but is still involved with politics, both in Westminster and in his role for the Angling Trust. And there are one or two burning issues he wants to get stuck into. Water abstraction is one. We're all drinking too much and bathing too often. Another is cormorant damage, and we shooters know what to do about that. He reckons the only way of dealing with these issues is by making as big a noise as possible. So we're a lot more unified than we've ever been. We've probably got more political clout uh, than we've had for an awful long time. Uh, but it does need people pulling in the same direction. There's still not enough of, of us. Uh, I mean, for a sport of two to three million people, you know, we should have a lot more members and we should have a lot stronger voice, but we're in much better heart than we used to be 10 years ago, certainly. Mark is taking well to watching a float instead of a fly. He catches chub and grayling, while Martin tries his luck with a dead cert perch pond. Just a very little young grayling. People think British fish are kind of dull coloured. They're very subtly coloured, but in fact they're beautiful. If you look at that, that fin, remarkable fish. Really lovely colours to it. And the, the gill plate again, that's a purple. The lady of the stream, they call them. Like millions of anglers across the country, he is passionate about his sport and of course wants people to join the Angling Trust to safeguard fishing for the future. Together, you know, we're a really large body of people and we could be really influential and, and be very powerful in terms of votes and politicians listen to votes. So it's really about protecting fish and fishing and by being unified and being a single body for all anglers, um, we're much more powerful. Wonderful. Fantastic. That was according to plan. Look at that. That is perfection. Look at that lovely bronze colour. Beautiful fish. The lovely red fins. They're just, uh, you know, one of our native coarse fish and, uh, and they're very secretive. They're very spooky. Uh, you, you often have to you show great stealth uh, catching them, so I'm pleased to have crept up on this one. And uh, what I did was just fed some maggots down this, uh, this swim, let them drift down. 
and then I caught it just off that tree. I thought I hooked the tree actually. Um, so I was pulling at that and then uh, it started to swim upstream and, uh, and turned into this. Not another trout, but, uh, but a lovely chub. It's exactly what we were after. And I'm really pleased with that. Let's put it back. Mark also wants to influence the lawmakers. We're battling to some extent with the RSPB on the Cormorant issue and the, the RSPB has a million members and at the moment it's very, very difficult to get a licence to shoot them even when you've got 60 cormorants on your fishery, you know, destroying, destroying your livelihood and a, and a rural business and, and the enjoyment of uh, thousands of people. Here we have trout with signs of cormorant attack. So here we've got, you can see where the cormorants tried to have a go at it and even there as well. But that's a really nasty one. It's that, it's that beak jabbed down at it. Lovely fish, but it's been savaged. Twice, there's another one there. Fishing is a sport where technique and skill bring rewards, but it is also wonderfully therapeutic. So, instead of paying hundreds of pounds for counselling, join the Angling Trust, make a difference and go find yourself a stretch of water. Anglingtrust.net